Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we have the patch notes. They went live at the same time as the cards, but yeah, we gotta review the cards first. But there's a ton of stuff being added, well, added to the game right now. This patch is live with the new free legendary, but again, Baku, playable and standard. Why? Why are we doing that? Anyways, we'll talk about that as well as the unveiled, the new twist heroes that will be appearing next season that you'll be able to try out if you, of course, on the legendaries that go with it and all that stuff. There's also another event coming with free cards, a change to the XP system that might piss some people off that like to AFK. We'll talk about that as well as a bunch of other stuff. And a reminder, we have our giveaway going on for two regular pre-orders, one mega bundle out of my pocket to enter that giveaway. Like a comment in the video linked in the description below, the one with that thumbnail over there. Be subscribed to the channel and every thousand subs we get until all the cards are revealed, I will add another mega bundle. So hit that sub button, make me go broke. So patch 29, Point six is live right now. You can log into Hearthstone, download it. Might be a little bit delayed on mobile as it is. I got this draft a little bit early from Blizzard, so I was able to record it early. It's a draft, but overall, you can now pre-order the next expansion, the Mega Bundle, the regular order, or you know, you can win it off of our uh, giveaway. We have the new Legendary, which we reviewed that we'll be trying out and seeing uh, how it works out in tomorrow's day one patch review and Marin the Manager, where you can get those fantastic treasures. I think it looks really solid, like really good. A lot better than the Califio one we got or whatever it was called in the last set. But yes, the big news, Gen and Baku return to the core set. As it reads here uh, with patch 29.6 until the launch of Perils of P in Paradise on July 23rd. So it's just a temporary, like when they have the Frozen Throne cards in there, it's temporary. So if you, you hate getting Baku, they're only there for like a month. I uh, will be added to the free core set. That means it will be playable in standard and wild for everyone, everyone during that time. Years ago, these two iconic cards were so powerful, they were sent to wild early. Now they're here, they're back to celebrate Hearthstone's history and for a bit of revenge. What odd creations will you even come up with? I, I see what they did there. Very, very clever. Be interesting to see how meta these can be. There's not like there's payoff cards. Like if your deck only is even, your deck only is odd cost payoff cards. I think Warlock looks like a standout. Mana Life Tap is pretty good with Gen. I could also see like even Druid with like the hero powering maybe be being a thing, but overall, like uh, Baku, you don't really want to hero power these days. It even upgraded, I'm not sure, but we'll see how it plays out. But look out, Gen Greymane, Demon Hunter. You can finally get that one mana Demon Hunter hero power. Um, yeah, you might want to do that. It's kind of funny, but yes, we'll uh, we'll see if there's any new decks that emerge and maybe we'll have some recommendations in the next couple of days. Buddies are back in Battlegrounds where you can play around with all sorts of stuff. We already had a video covering that a little bit. There's the blog and all that. Patch notes will be linked down below if you wanna take a look at more of the specifics. Um, there will be an in-game event as always every year, the Midsummer Fire Festival with a new Fire Festival in-game event before we set for Perils in Paradise from June 25th to July 16th. You can get XP and get Five, what, six Whizbane packs and a Voltron, a Reaver Voltron Rogue Hero skin. So we'll have a reminder for you guys when that is coming up. We have the July twist season announcement with nine new heroes. You'll be able to try out if you have those cards. So Marin the Manager will have its own one. So that's a free card. You'll be able to access that one. No problem. Everyone can play that. So that is very nice. Mayor and the manager has the passive of seize the opportunity. When you play your right most card, draw a card. With the hero power investment, one mana, shuffle three coins into your deck. So, you know, you basically, the idea is you're gonna top deck those coins and you can just draw a card. So we'll see how that one plays out. Necklace aren't shared here, but they'll be, you know, we'll see them when they're live in the game. Lady Liadrin has the passive after you cast a spell on a friendly minion, draw a card. It costs two less and you can only do this 
once per turn. With a zero mana hero power of patience, you refresh your mana crystals, lock this hero power for that many turns. So you could get like a big mana cheat scam thing. And like, I guess if you refresh five mana, then you can't use that hero power for five turns. So really interesting one. That reminds me more of Battlegrounds than anything. We have Sargeras with the passive, the end is nigh. At the start of your turn, you shuffle a 10 cost spell that deals 30 damage into your deck and has the hero power of twisting nether three mana destroy all minions and it's only usable once so you get a free board clear well three mana board clear at some point which can be pretty good and you only have to get three of those 10 cost spells to kill uh, i guess Cthune right at 80 health <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous uh elite tour champion which has the passive of keep on rocking at the end of your turn give a random top minion in your hand plus two plus two with the hero power of riff wrath one mana get a two one rocker with taunt finale summon it if you finish off your turn you get like a free two on which can be quite nice got helveria dark raven with the passive outcast anthem the left and right most cards in your hand cost one less so a constant mana cheat effect with the hero power of song of angst one mana choose a minion it takes one extra damage from all sources this turn i guess you could hit your own if you really want to heartbreaker hadonis with the starstruck uh, passive when a minion enters your hand give it minus to attack and reduce its cost by one hero power captive audience which is two mana give a minion plus two plus two if it's silenced draw a card what a weird one uh thorium storm lord passive of titanic surge your totems have plus two attack wherever they are harness the storm for one mana summon a basic totem summon two if you're overloaded queen ajara has passive of shifting tides after you play a spell refresh a mana crystal and switch to Naga. So it's got that whole like sharpshooter or fight last stop style of mechanic. Also swaps your hero power um, and the hero power is command Naga, one mana, get a Naga that costs three or less. Or if you swap it, get a spell that costs three or less. So again, there's, there'll be a weird one to play out. Sounds very, uh, very solo player style. And we have Tamsin Rome uh, with passive of perfume phylactery. You have two lives. After you die, your hero power deals damage instead of summoning a minion. So you have Blood Pact, take one damage, summon a 1-1 demon, increases each turn. Soulbound, two mana, take one damage, deal one damage, increases each turn. So yeah, those will be live uh, next month and then Wizbang's hero goes away for some reason. I, it's still super weird, but there are some more updates here. Uh, diamond disenchanting update starting with this patch so right now most diamond cards will be able to be disenchanted for the same value as if they were golden cards as with other qualities the diamond cards that won't be able to be disenchanted are the ones that are specially granted like ones on the rewards track or included in the golden mini set as with signature cards diamond cards still won't be able to be crafted to keep them exciting and special definitely not fomo give us money at all right i'm guessing they're doing this so they nerf like a dr holiday style of card you can disenchant it if you really want to get that dust if it's nerfed so there is that there's a matchmaking update with previously matchmaking on the rank ladder was based on your internal rating commonly called mmr while you had bonus stars and based on ladder rank after you ran out of bonus stars now matchmaking will continue to be based on your eternal rating even after you run out of bonus stars this change should reduce matchmaking complexity and result in more consistent and fair matches throughout the ladder should also help avoiding bots i think it's a big part of this is trying to make the matchmaking less likely for once you lose your star bonus to just like constantly queue into bots and things like that so because bots are not likely to have star bonuses in a high uh, mmr similar to you so that should hopefully help so we'll see how that plays out and then we'll see if you guys are mad about this but there's the passive xp grant adjustment in our continued efforts to combat bots and exploitive play patterns extended periods of inactivity will now reward less xp 
This change will not impact players taking normal game actions on their turn, such as playing cards, making attacks, or even just hitting the end turn button. So most players won't see change in their XP earned, just fewer bots wasting their time. So AFK, like solo adventures and stuff like that, I know people do that to like farm XP. They already nerfed the mercenary style of doing it. They're nerfing this version. And again, it's to help combat bots, but it's like a side effect of everything. I believe in rewarding players for actually playing the game. And that still is true here. And it's more of just kind of, you know, curbing bad actors and, you know, just things you're not really wanting in the game of, you know, AFK the menu to get XP is not exactly you know, normal. It's more like gaming the system. I don't see it as a huge deal, but let me know down below if it's something that kind of irks you. And there's a bunch of bug fixes, game improvements, nothing that I saw of like, we're changing weeklies or whatever, but complete your deck button went missing for some reason. So that's back there. They fixed a bug where persistent effects like sigils and auras didn't stack and replaced by cards like uh, tests and all that. A very important bug fix where a banana couldn't have a funny mustache. Like that is just unbelievable that that, that was a thing. A lot of the old like Boomsday puzzles were updated to be solvable now. So that's good. Yeah, overall lots to check out. We'll have our day one patch review i will say big thumbs up no early access card if you pre-order the mega bundle there's no early access card they listen to the feedback on that not doing that anymore so that's a big thumbs up and yeah we'll see how everything plays out anyways if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe have a great day and stay salty my friends